All right, today we are going to be upgrading from uh, a firmware version before 109. Um, this particular one is at 107.11, and we're going to be upgrading to the, uh, the current firmware of 115.16. First thing we're going to do is create a backup. You go into the maintenance tab, backup on the left, and you uh, do a backup. You only need to back up the config file, everything else is optional based on what you want to do. Uh, between each backup and each config, I'm going to pause the video and then come back in and uh, unpause it after the backup's done. In this case, we're going to uh, download the backup so we have it separate from the system so that we can uh, restore it if we ever need to. Um, in this case, I have uh, already downloaded it. I'm going to download another one here and uh, we'll get rolling. So each each firmware needs to be upgraded to individually meaning that we have to go one at a time so uh, with the exception of the first one if you're before uh, if you're before 109 you can do one upgrade straight to 10997 which is the firmware that allows you to transition from asterisk 8 to the new version of asterisk and uh, that will uh, that will prepare the system to be upgraded. Um, the jump from 109 to uh, 1010 is a pretty big jump. It takes a long time, but uh, that's what the the 10997 firmware does. It preps it for that jump. So now you go into maintenance and upgrade, and you find your firmware. In this case, I've got the firmware package for the 6100 series. You will notice the firmware for 6200 for this version doesn't exist because the 6200 series version started um, on 1010 firmware. So you navigate to your 10997 firmware and click upgrade. Uh, again, like I said, I'm going to pause between and then we'll uh, come back as soon as it's done. And here we're back. I'm going to hit OK to reboot. This will automatically reboot the system. It's uh, worth noting that uh, that not uh, the systems don't reboot every single time. I've had instances where um, the system didn't reboot, and I had to go do it manually. So between each reboot, you want to either ping it or go look at it. And you can see here that we were on the 109.97 firmware, and now we're going to jump to the 1010. But before we do that, I'm going to catch myself here and... Uh, and do a backup. So the 1010 firmware has two pieces, a DPT version and a regular FW version. The DPT version um, is the one that gets the transition done for us. Um, and here's where I realize I need to do a backup. So the first upgrade is the DPT file. The second upgrade to the 1010 is the uh, is the regular firmware file. And we'll, we'll show you that later as well. So we're going to go ahead and do a backup to the uh, to the USB drive, um, which didn't work. Oh, that's because it's an SD card. So you have to do the backup to uh, to whatever type of external media you have. Um, you will need a USB or an SD card to accomplish the upgrade because it does a backup and it won't do it on the system because the system is factory reset between the 109 firmware and the 1010. So my backup is done. I'm going to go ahead and download it. Um, again, I just did a config file so that it is only uh, only a few meg in size. Then we go back to the upgrade section and we go from the 109 firmware to the 1010 DPT bin file. And that's the one I'm showing you there. Now, once you hit upgrade, uh, this upgrade will start and will prompt you to do the backup that it's going to do. Um, if you're on a 6100 series, you need to have at least 8 gig card in. If you're on the 6510 series, you'll need a 64 gig card in. Um, once you say OK, then it will do a backup. You can see it says devices processing backup. And after the backup is done, then it will do the upgrade and come back up for the reboot. And here we are at the reboot. So in between each one of these, you'll just have to pause the video, do your part, and then keep going. Um, again, the system does not always reboot. Um, but if it uh, if it's not rebooting, go do it manually, and it should come back up. 
Now this particular version, um, the reboot will come back up, but you will need to either clear your browser cache or open a new browser to to open this this next step because the system is uh, is factory resetting itself. So if I if I open a new tab here and try to uh, log in now. You can see I typed in a, the same IP address. It maintains it and it maintains the password, but you can see the screen is different. It won't take the admin admin. It's the regular password that you already had set up for the system. Once you get in here, you click the upload button, and this is where you upload the 1010 regular firmware file, not the DPT version. All right. This takes it then from its new factory reset state with a backup on that USB driver or SD card and will upload the firmware. Now up on the top left it says status. It will say done when it's done. It'll, right now it says recovering please wait. So even though it says done in the bottom right, we're waiting for that recovering please wait to change to finished. Once it does, we'll click the reboot button and we'll move on. So again, um, all the way up to about 1011 firmware, I have seen it where I've had to reboot the system manually. And uh, I've also had it where I've never had to reboot the system manually, where it works every time I click it, says the signal, does its reboot, and we're good to go. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pause again, let it finish, and you can see it says upgrade we're successfully now, and then we hit reboot. This is where I walk away and, and check to see if the, uh, if the system reboots on its own or not. And then I'll come back and we'll, uh, we'll continue. Now, this is the only time that you have to get a new tab or even a new browser. Um, if you're using like Chrome, you can control F5. That's how you clear the browser cache. Um, and it will allow you to retype in the IP address and get to a different view but your browser will cache and remember exactly how uh, it's supposed to look and when it doesn't see that it won't pull up the screen so it's always important to make sure you, you clear that browser cache once you've uh, got this one done you don't need to use that recovery tab anymore you can close that tab out um, and then you can go back to your original tab and it should come back uh, with the same IP address. Um, it doesn't hurt to go look at the LCD screen and make sure that when it comes back up um, that it has the same IP address. It's possible for it to grab the default IP uh, depending on how you have your network configured because it is a fresh factory reset um, install of 1.0.10.44 firmware. So you're going to get it like it was fresh out of the box. No configuration at all. So it's possible for it to grab a different IP or to even use the default IP um, once the system comes back up, you should simply be able to hit enter and voila. Um, again, if the LCD screen tells you a different IP address, then you want to type in that IP address and, uh, and you will get to this page. We don't need to go through the wizard, so we're going to quit the wizard and go straight into maintenance and do a restore because everything is fresh out of the box. So we go to the backup section and we find our file that the system created. So it's, if you sort by date, it's going to be the most recent backup that the system created. In this case, it's my top one here. And uh, you click the restore button on the right, which is a little half circle with a dot in the middle of it. And this will begin the restore pop process for everything that you backed up, um, bringing it back into place. The, uh, the jump from 109 to 1010 has some uh, pretty big changes and uh, it's important to note that, that not all your configurations will work. Um, one example is on SIP trunks. If you're used to using the NAT checkbox in your SIP trunk, you have to uncheck NAT, go into PBX SIP NAT settings on your UCM and check the SDP, SDP box instead. So it it's, does the same basic thing but uh, is a little bit different. Now that we're on 1.0.10, we're going to, we can see everything's been restored. Our password is back. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a backup again between each upgrade. And the upgrades from this point on are pretty simple. Um, 
but I still like to uh, to change the name. I like to change the name of my backup file to match what the uh, the firmware version is of the current state of my system. So um, I put periods in here. I'm going to take those out and put in uh, underscores instead. But the, currently the system is on 110.44, and so we're going to type that in at the end of my date. Back up. 2018, January 18th, 1010.44. So that way I know that this backup happened on version 1010.44. So if I, I get to the end of everything here and I'm not sure what went wrong, I can always go back and restore the correct backup. Um, in this case, uh, I don't expect any problems. I accidentally moved a file here. We're going to move it back. There we go and go back into my firmware versions. <clears throat> so the firmware versions I like to keep track of. So 110.44, 110.12.19, 110.13, what is it, 30, 113.14 is it? And then 114 something and 115.16. And we'll go through each one as we go. So pause it here and bring it back after the backup's done. It does take a little while. You can see the backup files get bigger and bigger as the firmware versions increase and as you back up more stuff. Now that I'm on 110.44, I do a full backup. I want everything. I want recording files, voicemail files, all of it. After I get my backup, I go ahead and do the next firmware version. So as you can see, we did 110.44 last time. Now we go to 11.27. And these are pretty simple, but you need to go in order. You do not jump to the end. It will probably let you jump to the end, but if you are if you are saving any configuration, you cannot just jump straight to the end. Um, I believe okay. Backup's done. We're going to go ahead and reboot. He's going to, we're going to pause it again, and uh, and we'll go right into the next backup after we show that it's on 111.27. But I believe you can go straight to 1.0.15.16 from this point if you're using a fresh install. So you can go straight to 1.0.15.16, do a factory reset of the system, and boom, you're good to go, fresh install. But you do the jumps because each conversion from 1.0.10 to 1.0.11 to 1.0.12 changes the correct settings so that they stay working as you go. If you're going to do a fresh install, then you can go straight to 1.0.15.16, get your backup done, and you're good. But that's only from 1.0.10.44 and newer. You cannot go to 1.0.15.16 from 1.0.9. At this point, I knew there would be some people that, uh, that would not be watching this and understand English, so I went ahead and wrote this out so that uh, those that don't understand English can at least take this and type it in somewhere else and, and understand that this can happen. Um, this is what I talked about earlier, that occasionally between upgrades, um, this is the one that it usually happens on the most. The 1.0.10.44 to 1.0.11.27, um, I get that one a lot, and the, uh, the recovery screen to the, to the 1.0.10.44, I get that one a lot, where I have to go reboot the system manually. So if you're going to do this remotely, make sure that you have somebody on site who can uh, reboot the system for you if you can't be there personally. Someone that knows enough that they can look at the LCD screen and tell you if the IP address has changed. Um, I cannot stress how important it is to not start this process if you are not sure that you have somebody that can reboot the system, especially if it's part of a critical system where they need to make sure their phones are working because you will be in a bind. Um, so. This says this was an upgrade from 1.0.10.44 to 1.0.11.27, and even though I pressed the reboot, the system did not reboot. In this case, I needed to reboot the system by hand on site. This does not always happen, but it happened often enough to document the issue. Between each upgrade, make sure the system is rebooting. If you are trying to do this remotely, you can monitor it with a ping to dash T. Um, you open a command prompt, and you type the IP of ping, the IP address, followed by dash T afterwards. It looks like this. The dash T allows the ping to continue endlessly. It won't stop pinging. It'll just keep pinging and pinging and pinging until you press control C to stop it. And you can see I'm getting a reply, a constant reply. 
Now, the reason I'm leaving it, and I'm going to show you what happens um, when you then tell it to reboot. So, when it reboots, you should see it go down. You should see it say, it can't do it. And we're going to try it right here. Let's have a look. If I'm, if I'm done typing. <laughs> I will reboot my hand to demonstrate. So now I'm walking over to the system physically because when I hit the reboot button, it didn't go for me on this one. So this is uh, what reminded me to tell you. As soon as I reboot it, it starts saying request timed out. And it will do the reboot. And as soon as it comes back and is able to see that there is an IP address again, you'll start getting the reply from the phone system, which is the 113 address in this case. And uh, I will then be able to log back into it. Now, as soon as the address becomes reachable again, um, you can't immediately see it. You need to give it a couple minutes because the IP address will come up, but the system won't quite be ready to accept your credentials. It still needs a little time to finish booting, even though the network part of it is working. So again, once you have your, your connection back, um, you press Control C to cancel it, or you can simply close the command prompt itself. Let's go look at it again here. Still, still trying to ping, hasn't stopped. Yep, you can see the line slowly moving up. So it's constantly trying, and as soon as it goes down, it's nice because then you know it actually did reboot. Um, and there we go and we got our, our ping back. So as soon as it comes up again, we just simply close the window or press Control C and we should be able to now get back in. And that's what I, that's what I say right here. Shortly after it starts, the system should be available. It should be up. So we can refresh the same screen or click on the address and hit enter and we should get a login screen. Again, like I said before, sometimes it takes a little bit after the uh, IP address becomes available for the browser be, to be able to populate, and this is normal. So after this upgrade, the, uh, the next few go really fast as far as, uh, as, far as the video is concerned. Um, each backup gets bigger and bigger. And we'll take maybe five minutes if you have a fair amount of, uh, of information to both back up and, and download if you want to download it. Um, and then the upgrade itself goes pretty quick. The upgrades for the, the 109.97 to 1.1010 um, take a little bit of time because that's a pretty big jump. And it's got to do a full factory reset, a full backup and everything. You can, you can expect maybe... 10 to 20 minutes depending on your network connection because it's got to upload it across the network and that sort of thing. And again, I, I popped up on the screen here and said you can see that even after grabbing an IP, the web interface isn't ready yet. This can take a few minutes. Now the, uh, the Grandstream system says wait two minutes and you should be able to log in again. And that's usually pretty accurate. It only takes about two minutes to fully reboot the system. But uh, as soon as it's back up, you should be able to log right back in. Um, there have been times where I needed to close the browser and then reopen it, and uh, that's, uh, that's normal too. So if the system doesn't want to load, that's what I recommend. Let's see, if the system doesn't load after you see the IP come on the LCD, you can clear the browser cache. That's a good idea. Again, that's uh, Control F5 for, for Chrome. I think that's the same. I think that's the same on the other ones, but I honestly don't know for certain. Um, but Control F5 is for Chrome. Um, oh, the uh, the different jumps will change the visual appearance of the web interface, 
And just like before, when the uh, when the page or the screen changes, the system doesn't always like it. So it remembers what it remembered before and doesn't want something new. And so it gives you a hard time and won't, won't always load what you want. Um, that's where closing the browser or closing the tab and opening a new one can help. Um, but doesn't uh, doesn't always. Sometimes you have to uh, clear the browser cache and, and do all three. Where you clear the browser cache, you close the browser, um, but try different things like that and it will eventually uh, you'll be able to get back into it with uh, with cleared out settings. So here I copied the address, opened a new tab, closed the old tab, pasted and away it went. It was that simple. <coughs> In this case I uh, am typing so it takes me a little longer to get through it and, and show you that process. So. Um, as usual, N2D Solutions will, uh, will help you guys out with, uh, with anything you need. If you have comments or questions, don't hesitate to leave them, and uh, we'll be happy to, to help you out. I did notice when I hit the, this version of firmware, the, uh, the ring groups show up with orange busy lights, and I don't know why that is, um, but I noticed it started in 111.27, and I believe it's fixed in the current firmware. But here's where we get cruising. We're going to do a full backup for each version. Uh, we already did 101044, now it's 101127. Um, I'll go ahead and pause and come back, and we'll reboot, and then we'll just do it all over again. Oh, I think I changed my mind in this case. We didn't want everything, we just want the quick one. So if you're confident in your backup process, um, once you reach the 101044, all of the other stuff will never be deleted with an upgrade. You'll only uh, you only uh, upgrade the config file, and all the other stuff will kind of sit there. So if you're confident that, that nothing's going to go wrong, then you just keep on doing a config backup and ignore the extras. Uh, before 1010, I always do everything if I can to make sure I've got it. Here's 1012.19. Upgrade. We'll go ahead and pause. And we're back. There we go, rebooting. And we'll pause again. And we'll come back when it comes back up. And each time it's the same thing. Simply log in, same password. And you can see the ring groups aren't showing anymore. 1012.19. Go to backup. Do another backup. Change the name if you want. 1012.19. And again, just pause the video between each one of these if you need time to catch up. But if you watch this video now to the end, you'll notice that uh, there isn't much else to it. You just do this each time all the way to the end. But we'll go ahead and pause and come back. And between each reboot, I do walk over to my system and verify that uh, that it did actually reboot. Uh -huh. There's the backup. And the backups go really quick now that I, I only do a config file. Um, but they will get pretty big uh, if, you, uh, if you don't. Here's our upgrade now. We're going to go to 1013. And you'll notice on the website that once you pass the 1010.44 firmware, you'll see two different firmware upgrades, one for the uh, 61XX series and one for the 62XX series, and they are not interchangeable. You need to get the right one for the system that you have. So if you have multiple systems in multiple places and multiple versions like 6100, 6200, make sure that you have them both on hand um, what you're seeing here is I'm grabbing from my own shared drive. I keep all the firmwares available for myself so that I always have them available to grab no matter uh, where I'm going or what system I'm dealing with. But as you can see here, we did a backup and an upgrade and a reboot and a pause between them. And now we're logging back in. And each time you can hit status and verify that the system status has the new version of firmware, 1.0.13.14. So we are victorious. And we go right on to the next one. 
Another backup. Label it 101314. Again, just a couple seconds to do the backup. Still the same size. It gets a little bit bigger each time because there's more information that the system is taking care of. Same upgrade process, same spot. Now, let's see, is it this one or the next one that changes the web interface? Yeah, it's this one. So the jump to 1014, this is the jump that fixes the security hole. So if you are coming into this knowing that there is a security breach on the system and the only way to fix it is upgrade the firmware, this is the one that fixes that. As soon as you get to the 1014 firmware, your system is no longer hackable without knowing the password, and you're safe once again. Um, in this case, there is another version, 101516, that's available after this one, and that's what we're going to go to. Um, oh, I even set it on the system as I did that. It changes the interface, yes. So you may have to clear the browser cache. Um, if, uh, if the system doesn't want to pop up after the reboot. Um, the interface is a little different. Um, I think I like it. Yeah, I like it. Uh, I, I don't like how on the old one you would have to wait for each section to load and then you can click on the next thing. In the new one, you hover over things and go all the way to your end destination and click on it once. And then it goes straight to where you want to go. And you don't wait for like three, four steps for each page to load to get there. So that's my favorite part of the new new interface. Um, but it does move a few things around. Uh, like your ports config is in a different spot. Um, a few different things like that. So we're going to go ahead and pause and we'll be right back. And there it is again. And you can see the web interface has changed. Same password, same concept. Uh, for those of you that are getting new systems, not that you uh, would get this far and not have figured it out, but they've started putting the passwords on the bottoms of the phone systems because people are leaving their, their systems with the uh, default password and it's, it's bad. It's not a good thing. You can see here uh, the backup, you actually have to flip it to SD card again. Um, because it doesn't retain that after through this firmware, where normally every time you do a backup, it remembers you saved to the SD card. In this case, we have to uh, we have to tell it to not save locally, but save to the SD card. I recommend uh, activating the regular backup file, which is available here too, um, especially if you have an SD card. But do it like every month. Don't do it every day, otherwise you'll fill up that card real fast. Uh, all we have here is like an eight gig card, so. Um, it will take a couple of years to fill it, but uh, it will fill if you uh, if you do regular backups like every week. Uh, the system cleaner has the ability to to mitigate that for you if you learn how to work that. But uh, you can see here the backup actually is now 26 megabytes rather than what was just six megabytes. So it does keep getting bigger in size. Oh, I was wrong. 6.56 megabytes. I think I did one earlier that was 600 meg, but they had recording files. And then the final jump, 101516, just like all the rest. Now this one um, actually says upgrading firmware files right on the screen and pops up the reboot right on the screen as well as soon as you uh, choose uh, the file to upload. Um, I did notice that the 101516, it doesn't say rebooting anymore. Um, so I don't know if that's a bug or if that's intentional, but uh, it won't tell you after you hit reboot that it is rebooting. So you just gotta wait a few minutes and then uh, and then log right back in. Once you're back in, you are up to date. You have all the latest stuff in all the right places. Um, in this case, I logged in so quickly that it wasn't able to load really fast, so I just have to wait here, and the uh, the information will come up. On the website uh, firmware.grandstream.com, um, it will show you that uh, that there are 
that this is the latest version and that uh, there are added security improvements in the 1014.24 firmware. That's the one that fixes it. So you don't have to go past 1014.24 if you don't want to. Uh, I think 1015.16 works just fine. I haven't noticed any um, bugs or anything that are that are detrimental or anything. So I would go all the way to 1015.16. Uh, this video will probably sit out here a while. Um, so I, I always recommend the latest firmware. Um, with Grandstream products, I sometimes wait a month or two before going to it, but uh, but I do recommend as soon as they go official and not uh, not beta that you upgrade them. Once you're all done, um, I do one more backup. This time I do everything, um, just so I know that I have everything backed up one last time, and uh, and this will wrap it up for us. So again, if you have any questions, comments, um, other videos that you want help with things that I can do for you, don't hesitate to uh, leave us a message. Send me an email, uh, support at n2vs.com. That's N is in Nancy, the number two, V is in Victor, S is in Sam.com. And uh, we will get back to you, and we will uh, help you if we can. We have uh, paid support. We have um, different blocks of hours. If you buy uh, a large amount of hours from us, um, you can get discounts. Um, dealer rates. We can help you set up your systems that you're trying to help help set up for other customers. Anything like that. So we, we're here to help you succeed.